Hey, hey, everyone. Come on in. Come on in. It's Bible study time, and we are live. Come on in. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Got the liquor gear on. I know it's rough to be a liquor fan right now. Wait, let me show you my liquor gear. Huh. Los Angeles liquor gear right there. Boom. But I got Shaq. I got the winning team. Hold on. I got the winning team. To all my LeBron fans, I hear you, but Woo! man, come on in. Start sharing. Start inviting people into Bible study. Bible study tonight. God bless you on a Wednesday night. Good to be here. How many know we win? Listen to we win. Uh, Kurt Franklin and little baby. Yeah. Time for Bible study. Let's get by. What's up, Sister Kelly? Y'all tap in and let me know you're here. If you're on my page, I can't see your comments and I apologize. Um, but if you're on the church pages, um, let me see. Maybe I could just start watching my page. Maybe I'll do that. I'll watch my page. That way I can see y'all comments. There we go. I'll turn mine down. That way I can see the comments. All right, so I'm going to watch my page too. Do it like that. That way I can see all the comments that's coming in. What's going on? What's going on, everyone? Everyone, God bless you. Tap in, tap in. What's up, Sister Tina? What's up, Sister Brigitte? Sister Simon? Let's go, let's go. Let everybody know it's Bible study on tonight. Give you a few more minutes. We tapping in tonight. Tap in, tap in, tap in. Living Faith Cathedral Wednesday night Bible study. I'm not going to keep y'all long. I want to finish up this series and we are done. Uh, what's up, Mama Tosca? Happy Wednesday to everybody. Can y'all hear me good? If everyone can hear me good, let me know with thumbs up that y'all can hear me good. Everyone, let me know you can hear me good. Yes, 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 yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I mean, you know, you win in 2022. Yes, sir. We're winners. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you. Everyone tap in on me. Let me know. Yeah, I see you, Sister Candace. I see you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get this Bible study going. We're getting ready to get started in a few more minutes. We're going to start one more, about 30 more seconds. Give everyone time to get in. Hey, what's up, Sister Freeman? Amen. Amen. What's up, Pastor Dorsey? That's my man, Pots and Pants. God bless you, Pastor Dorsey. Love you, man. Hey, listen, everyone tap in. We're getting ready to, to uh, get this Bible study. We're on four platforms. First Lady's page. I can't see you, but God bless you. Living Faith Cathedral pages on Facebook and, and uh, YouTube and, of course, my personal page. So we love you all. God bless you. Let me turn this down. We're going to get ready to get started. I love you all so much. Hey, let's pray. Father, we thank you right now. We bless your name. We give you praise and glory. We give you honor. We thank you for another week, God. We thank you for another time to just serve you. We thank you, God, for how good you've been to us. We pray right now, God, that, Lord, that we go into a new season, Lord, a new season of blessings, a new season of miracles. And God, even if some of us are in the Gethsemane moments right now, if we're in the garden of our trials and tribulations. We pray that if you don't bring us out, and you can't bring us, not that you can't bring us out, but you don't intend to bring us out, that you do like Jesus and send us an angel that will strengthen us to bear our cross. Strengthen us, God, to go through what it is that you know we can go through. So we'll come forth as pure gold. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I'm going to read a very uh, popular uh, scripture. It's in Psalms 1. And y'all know that we've been dealing with our holiness series. Don't get scared. I'm not going to be as rough as I was on Sunday. Woo, Sunday was a little rough one. But to all of you that want to live right and want to make heaven your home, listen, make no mistake about it. There is a certain lifestyle that a true Christian should be living, all right? There is a certain lifestyle that if you are a man or woman of God, that there should be no doubt. Now, I'm not saying you can't have fun in life. I'm not saying that you can enjoy life. I'm not saying that you shouldn't live life to its fullest. It's just a certain way that the Christian does it that's a little different than the sinner, all right? Um, some say a lot different, but we serve different daddies. If you love God, what's up, Pastor Fox? If you love God, you just going to do things a little different, all right? We don't run to a lot of the vices that the world run to. We don't do the things that the world do. Our minds are sober. Our bodies are temples of God. 
And yes, we can still have swag. We can still look good. We can still dress good. We can smell good. We carry ourselves. We don't walk around looking all frumpy and acting like Jesus is, oh, it's, it's just a weight serving the Lord, but it's joy in serving God. And, and in this holiness walk tonight, I want to make sure Thank you, Sister Taka. She said that was good food on Sunday morning. In this holiness walk, I want to make sure that we uh, 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 live it to our fullest and that we don't have, as my daddy used to say, gay trouble, all right? That we don't have gay trouble, all right? So, y'all, I'm not here as the world so easily throws that word out there to judge you. We are confused judging with conviction. We have confused judging with conviction. Usually when we say we judge somebody, what you're really saying is that they're not good for anything. When the Bible uses the word judge, that you've already put them in hell, that they're past redemption, that they're past uh, sanctification and salvation. And that's not true. So you don't we don't pass judgment on people as if they cannot be saved. But it is OK to hold people accountable. And folks don't know the difference between being held accountable and judging. So the first thing they say is, oh, you're looking down on me. No. I'm telling you that there's a better lifestyle. Uh, there's a better way of living. I, I'm so tired of people when you call them out on what they're doing. Oh, you're judging me. I'm not judging you. If you smoke, you were smoking. If you lied, you liar. You you lied. You was a liar at that point. If you were having sex before marriage, that's fornication. I'm not judging you. I'm calling you out on the things that are not becoming to God. And the Bible tells us as Christians that we are to hold each other accountable. No more than you do your child. Your child, if I'm judging you as a Christian, then your child has the right to say, Mama, stop judging me when they mess up at home. You didn't do your chores. Why are you judging me? You, you ain't going to allow your child to say that. Why you didn't clean up your room? You judging me. Don't judge me. If you see how foolish that sounds? No. Little joker, clean your room up. Then you can play the game. <laughs> so be careful with people throwing that word out there uh, uh, because, you know, folks, just they just don't want to be held accountable. All right. And that's really what it is. They don't want to be held accountable. And that's OK. Be that person that if your friends get mad with you and don't talk to you, be that person that they'll know that if they need the truth, you will be that person that will tell them the truth. All right. You'll be that person that tell them the truth. Be OK. With being a person. And when you tell it, you tell it in love. Now, that's the other difference. You know, it's a way of telling somebody. I always make this example. You can go to somebody and say, hey, man, you need a mint. You need some gum. Hey, man, it's, you, you, it's kind of strong. And then going up to somebody, oh, my God, are you chewing garbage? Oh, my God, what's something dead inside of you? That's embarrassing somebody. That's trying to put somebody, as they say, on blast. Now you cap it on. We ain't saying do that to people. So when you hold somebody accountable, you bring them to the side and say, hey, man, there's a better way. There's a better way of living. God requires more of us. God is expecting us to do better. All right. And when you do it that way, people can receive it. And then no matter what way you do it, some folks just are not going to receive it. And that's between them and God. All right. So let's get into it. Psalms 1. Psalms 1. I'm going to read two different versions. Um, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Psalms 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. That's all we're going to take is that part right there. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. All right. So walketh, nor standeth, standing in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now, let's read from another version. Let's read from another version. Let's read from the Amplified version, all right? Let's read that version. It says, blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and uh, viable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, and their purposes, nor stands submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down to relax and rest where the scornful and the markers gather. My God. All right. All right. And it goes on to say, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, do he meditate both day and night? What's up, Jancita? Listen, I, girl, I've been missing you at church. Listen. So um, I want you to take these three points. All right. We're going to talk about walking. We're going to talk about um, standing. And we're going to talk about sitting. Walking, standing, and sitting, walking, standing, standing, and sitting. I don't know why I'm getting talk, tongue tied. All right. So let's talk about walk. Anytime the Bible talks about your walk, it's not talking about this walk. 
It's talking about how you carry yourself, all right? Anytime the Bible talks about how you walk, it is a synonymous with how you carry yourself. It is talking about walking as a lifestyle as a Christian, all right? So 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1. Everyone get 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1. Get your Bible out. If you're on your phones, get your real Bible. If you're not on your, on, on your Bible, you're on your computer, get your phones. Go to 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1. I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. Furthermore, brethren, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1. Furthermore, brethren, we beg and admonish you in the virtue of our union with the Lord Jesus that you follow instructions. Instructions are what? Of the word of Jesus Christ. You follow instructions which you have learned from us of how you ought to walk. Again, your lifestyle. How you ought to walk as to please and gratify God as indeed you are doing and that you do so even more and more abundantly attaining a greater perfection in living this life. In other words, you're maturing in your walk. You're maturing in this walk. All right. Somebody uh, write down mature, mature. Somebody write down the word mature. I got to mature in this walk. How many know that sanctification is a process? So I am maturing. I'm back to lifting weights. And um, back when I was a young man, man, I used to be able to bench press anywhere between 295 and 315, depending on how good of a day it was and if my joints hurt. But now, man, I, I can't lift that heavy weight no more. I, I, my, now, I got mature muscle. I'm 49 years old. I still can lift some weight, but I can't throw, away, throw around that big weight anymore like that. I, I can't throw it around. I can't mess with it like I used to uh, because I didn't continue my walk in weightlifting. <laughs> I didn't continue the lifestyle of weightlifting. All right. And then when I had my weight loss surgery and I lost just as much muscle as I did weight, just as much muscle as I did fat. Matter of fact, men tend to lose muscle faster because your body tends to want to eat the muscle because it's more nutritious than the fat. And so the doctor was very adamant with me taking a lot of protein while I was losing weight. Daryl, you got to replace the muscle. You got to take a lot of protein. He had me on these protein drinks that was 30 um, grams of protein. And he wanted me to do six of them, which was like 180 something grams of protein. So he wanted me to take a lot of protein because he wanted me to feed the muscle. All right. He didn't want me to just be all flabby. And, and, and but he wanted me to have some muscle still to have some muscle content. I'm a man. I got to have some muscle. So it's the same with God. Whatever you feed the most, your spirit, man, let's say that's protein. And let's say your flesh is the fat. All right. Let's say your flesh is the fat. If you eat the wrong thing, you're going to feed the wrong thing. And if you feed the wrong thing, your outcome and the way you look and the way you walk, is going to be totally different. 200 pounds of muscle looks totally different than 200 pounds of fat, all right? And a Christian walk is totally different than a sinner's walk. So it says, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I do not carry myself according to the world. I don't listen to what they tell me. I don't listen to, I don't allow the world to give me advice. I don't allow the world to, to uh, counsel me. I don't allow the world to tell me what's right and what's wrong. I don't let the world. If y'all know, everything is opposite of the world now. Everything is opposite. Um, um, one of our famous gospel singers that grew up singing gospel music had made a statement about how she don't allow single women around her men, uh, around her husband. She don't let her single friends stay the night at their house because she's protecting her husband and she just don't want any situation to arise. And half of the saints and the world started beating her up, calling her insecure. And why would you do that? And blah, 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 blah. When that's just common sense. Now, they caught something called, uh, and y'all excuse me for using this term, slut shaming. Ah, uh, don't slut shame me. So I'm wrong for talking about how if a woman dresses a certain way, and when I say dress a certain way, I ain't talking about pants and makeup. I'm talking about when they just straight out showing everything. I'm talking about when you can't tell if they are working a call girl or if they're just a regular woman. I, I should be free to dress however I want. Well, 
I can't get wrong. I can't be mad. Let's just talk. 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 Isn't that being judgmental? Sister Gray, I think you missed my point on being on judging and holding people accountable, but I'll say it again just for you. Let's talk. I cannot get mad if I go to a crypt. Oh, you already know what I'm talking about, Sister Star. If I go to a crypt territory, I cannot be mad. And I can say this because I grew up in Inglewood, California. And I put on all red. And I put on a red bandana around my face. Let's just put some real stuff out there. I got on all red. And oh, no problem, Sister uh, Gray, I got you. I'm not putting you on blast. I put on all red and put a red bandana around my face because we got to have masks. I cannot get mad if some Grape Streets, some Rolling Sixties, some A-Trade Gangsters roll up on me. If not, shoot me, hem me up and say, what set you from? Man, why are you judging me? Brother, you got on all red in a territory that's known for wearing blue. Let's just be real out here. Some, some of the stuff that we play games with, with our souls and our spirits, we're not being real. We would not let our children be flamed up going into a crypt territory. Why? Because we already know that some issues are going to jump off. So why would people be mad? Why would people be mad? If you're looking like somebody that is working the street for a living, and you, if I'm dressed up like an officer, I got a badge, a gun, I have on police clothes, and somebody runs to me and says, officer, officer, help me. How dare you say I'm an officer? I cannot be mad. So if I'm carrying myself as a pastor like a pimp, if I'm carrying myself as a thug, or a blood, or a crip. If I'm carrying myself as a married man, like a single man, that is not judging. I need somebody to hold me accountable. And again, we don't know the difference between holding people accountable and saying they're judging. And I will make this statement boldly. Most people that say you're judging me are folks who don't want to be held accountable. I'll make that st statement again. If our children do not do their chores, do not do their homework, do not clean their room. And we jump on them for it, and our child shot back at us. You're judging me. We're going to slap the snot out of them. Boy, didn't I tell you to clean that room up? Stop judging me. Boy, this room is nasty. Don't judge me. You're going to slap the snot out of them. You're not going to accept that. So why do we let people throw that back on us when we tell them, hey, you know good and doggone well how people are going to look at you if you wear that. You know, and y'all can let Meg the Stallion and Cardi B and all these folks, Cardi B husband put her on blast. She was talking about in a song how she don't sweep and clean up and all that. And he went and went on Instagram and said, I thought you don't sweep, sweep and cook. We don't even have enough sense to understand half this stuff is entertainment. All the women want to be married. All the women want to have husbands. All these dudes that's thugging want to get out of game banging and make their money legitimately. Don't nobody want to sell dope forever. Don't nobody want to game bang forever. Don't nobody want to sleep around forever. They have trust issues, most of them. <laughs> so when you carry yourself, when you carry yourself in a certain way, you cannot be mad because you are identifying. That's the word that I want to use. Stop identifying with something and then want to throw the word judging out there when you are identifying with it. I shouldn't be walking around with a chef outfit on if I'm not a chef. I shouldn't be walking around with a police uniform on if I'm not a police. You go to jail for impersonating a cop. You go to jail for impersonating a judge. I'm a city councilman. You'll go to jail for impersonating a city official. I have a badge that says Lancaster City Official. I have an elder's license. I'm about to be ordained a bishop. If you act like something that you're not, you know what it's called? Fraudulent. It's called con man. So if you don't want to be called on something, stop being something that you're not. Either you are or you're not. 
Oh, I know that hurts. 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 But that's the problem. Some of us ain't got real Christian friends. And some of us don't have folks. We're so scared of telling people the truth that the world is went haywire. We ain't told our children. Have y'all noticed how the mental demon of suicide and murder has taken over the world? With young men 30 and under? Have y'all noticed spiritual wickedness? Have y'all noticed what is going on? And this is what has happened. Our grandparents taught our parents holiness. And then our parents taught us holiness. And then we were supposed to teach our children holiness. But this is what happened. If anybody remember VHS tapes, or if you remember cassette tapes, when you continue to make copy after copy, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker to the point that you can't hardly see anything on the VHS or hear anything on the cassette tape. That you have to go back and get the original. And we have been so busy at listening to the wrong advice. God help me. Walking in the counsel of unspiritual people. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. We have allowed ungodly people to tell us how to live godly. Oh, we got to be more loving. We got to be more compassionate. We got to be more of this. There are laws for a reason. Let's talk about natural laws. There are laws for a reason. If you break those laws, there's consequences. If I don't have law, I can't be broken. If there's not a law, it can't be broken. I can't believe you took 10 bites out of that hamburger. That's against the law. There's no law that I can't have 10 bites out of a hamburger. No, you're only supposed to eat it in nine. Where's the law say that? You're just coming up with something. And the problem is we haven't read our law book. We've allowed people to dictate to us what they think holiness is and what they think the Bible says. And what they feel ought to be in the Bible, we have allowed our flesh and fleshly minded people to dictate, dictate to us holiness. And now we have a watered down version of holiness. Oh, help me in here. We have gotten so watered down in what holiness is. We have gotten so what when the Bible is plain on what holiness is. It tells us. Walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Why do you have more ungodly people in your ear than godly people? Why do you have more sinners in your ear than Christians? I can't find no Christian friends. Wrong. You just ain't gave up your worldly friend. Well, I got to give them up, Bishop. You ain't necessarily got to give them up, but it's going to be hard hanging with unsaved friends. Because what do you have in common? Your unsaved friends still go to the club. Walking not in the council of ungodly. Your unsaved friends are still dating unsaved people. Your unsaved friends are still drinking, smoking, cussing, fornicating, partying. You don't do that no more, you say. Any man being Christ, he is a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 1 Corinthians 5, 17. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Come out from among them, said the Lord, and be ye separate. No, you're not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. We're walking in living epistles, read and known among men. Y'all, y'all, y'all. What dog, Pastor, can I have fun? Yes. I don't have no problem dancing with my wife. That's my wife. I don't have no problem listening to some music that promotes love in my marriage. I don't have no problem going to movies. I don't have no problem going to shows. Now, there was a show. Let me tell you the difference. Me and my wife made one of the worst mistakes. Y'all know I'll tell on myself. And actually, well, first lady ain't here to defend herself, so I ain't gonna talk about her bad. But we were on our way to Vegas about 10 years ago. My wife wanted to see this show. I tell anybody to say, do not go see this show. I shouldn't even tell y'all because half y'all gonna go see it just because I said, what's up, Deacon Freeman? Congratulations on our new deacon in the church. Uh, it was called Zumanity. And I was looking at the reviews. And I'm like, babe, I don't think we should go see this show called Zumanity. Animalistic sex. I'm like, babe, I know we married and all that, but ew, this looks like this is going to be rough. 
Bert like, no, it's going to be, I knew we were in trouble. I'm just going to tell them myself so that y'all don't think I'm always perfect. And I know I'm the bishop, but the bishop makes mistakes. But this is what the bishop does that probably y'all don't do. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And I'm going to talk about the next one, nor standeth in the way of sinners. That stand means to be situated in a particular place or position or attitude of sin. I do not stand in the middle of sin. When I find out that I'm in a sinful situation, I get up out of there. I don't just stay planted. Nor stand, in other words, I don't, my attitude, not so much stand, but my attitude, my stand on, what's your stand on, on premarital sex? It's wrong. What's your stand on living holy with God? We do it according to the word. What's your stand on salvation? That we have to confess with our mouth and believe in it with our hearts. That Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again on the third day. And by him, all men are saved. By who? Jesus the Christ. Yeshua, the anointed one, the Messiah. That's my stand on salvation. What is my belief system? So, all right. Hey, my favorite auntie is on. God bless you, uh, uh, Missionary Tucker. Listen, so we went to this demonic sexual show, and I knew we was in trouble when I saw all these big-breasted women walking around with dildos in their hand. I'm sorry, Mother Doris. I know you're on here. And they were slapping men in the face. I was like, they better not come to my face and slap me with something like that. I'm going to slap them back. Me and my wife looking like, oh, my God. $150 tickets a piece. We should have got out of there then. I'm like, well, maybe it's going to get bait. Maybe it's, maybe it's going to get married. We married. We in it now. I don't want to give up $300. I know y'all laughing. I see all the laughing in there. And I'm like, oh, God. And when I tell y'all it got worse and worse, and after about 15 minutes, I can hear, I can see my, my mama got a, got a move that she does when she can't take something as simple. She just starts patting and looking the other way like, oh, Lord. She just starts patting her. Child, I could feel Mother Doris sitting next to me saying, get up out of here, Reverend. And me and First Lady got up and left. Let me tell you how bad the show was getting ready to get. We went, left, and they tell people, they already knew this. You don't get your money back. They don't even give you 15 minutes like a movie. They tell you right away, once you pay for it, you don't get your money back, which lets us know that they they know how runchy they get. So, yeah, Sister Smell. So, we get to the elevator, and one of the ushers like, couldn't take it, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, no, man. He said, well, you didn't even get to the worst part. The scenes of man on man woman on woman, and then they're going to have animals on there. It's going to get really bad. I'm like, what? And I looked at First Lady. I said, I'm going to tell. At that time, we was a Temple of Deliverance. I'm going to tell Temple of Deliverance. Yes, I do, Sister Star. That used to be, that was my spiritual father for years. Bishop John Richardson married me. I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell the church on you, First Lady, for the demonic tickets. But here's the thing. When you find yourself, all kidding aside, when you find yourself in a situation, in a sinful, something that's going against your spirit, get up and get out of there. You ain't sin because you made the mistake. You sin when you start partaking in it. I'm teaching tonight. So blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Stop listening to sinful folks who don't have a relationship with your father, nor are qualified to give you spiritual advice. Number two, nor walketh, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Stop listening with saints that agree with sinners living sinful lifestyles. And I know the biggest debate right now we have is our stance on homosexuality and our stance on, on abortion and our stance on stuff that we are letting the world dictate to us that the Bible has already made clear. We are to love everybody. And what the church has messed up at on those situations is we have not shown compassion. We have made our sins less than their sin when all sin is sin. And we act like we can't stand their sin when some of y'all have lived nasty lifestyles too. So yeah, they are upset with us. And the LGBT, uh, LGBTQ plus community has been uh, unfairly mistreated. And where else do they can they go but to church to get delivered and saved? 
and loved on. They're supposed to come to the house of God. They're supposed to come and uh, hug a man that wants to be a woman or a woman that wants to be a man or somebody who don't know what they are and they refuse to identify. We're supposed to love on them. Never do you see Jesus turning away sinners. We have become very pharisaical in our nature. Like it's a country club. And we wonder why the church is dying. The sinners are, shame on us that the sinners are scared to come to church. Shame on us. That we have made Christianity such a country club that saints are, people are scared to come in. People are scared to come in. And they're scared to tell. And here's the problem. Some of y'all so-called saints need to hit the altar. Y'all heard me talk about my dog and cat Christians. I'm going to tell it again. The Lord allowed me when we bought up, when we got our first house. Y'all heard me tell this. I say it for those that had never heard this. I, I, we had some, I don't know why mice keep following us in this in this city, but we had some mice in the backyard and we had some mice and my wife called me and said, babe, no, no, it was a mouse that had got in the house. It was a brand new house that you know how they leave houses open. And when we moving furniture and a mouse that got in the house, first lady was losing her mind. Babe, it's following me. Babe, it's playing tag with me. I said, okay, babe, I'll get a cat. We went and got a cat. At that time, he was Deacon Lloyd, now Pastor Lloyd, but Deacon Lloyd had just had puppies and gave us our first dog, German Shepherd. So I got the German Shepherd and the cat at the same time. They both kitten and a puppy. On cue, my dog went outside. She lifted her, he lifted up her leg, she whatever, and urinated all over my window just all we could just just urinated everywhere just we saw on cue the lord says look at your cat my cat three months old goes to the litter box tinkle 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 covers it up you can't even see where she urinated at and the lord said that's the sinks you got some that mess up and everybody see it and you got others that mess up and know how to cover it up. But here's the problem. They both messed up. And I saw it both. And we got a lot of people because they know how to hide. They mess. Love to blast everybody else. And don't want to show no grace. So yes, we call out sin. Yes, we live a sanctified lifestyle. But no. And, and uh, I hope my dear sister is still on. This is where we're careful at. We don't condemn people. Condemnation is different than conviction. I call you out. And when I call you out, I do it in love. I bring you to the side. I come talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I don't get you in the mic. The Lord said that you've been fornicating with 50 people. Is that correct? And embarrass the person. But I go to him and say, listen, your pastor had abortion. Your pastor used to have multiple girlfriends. Your pastor used to have pain and anger in, your, in his heart. Your pastor uh, was flirting with gangs and hung with bloods and crips. Your pastor did this stuff. And if God can save me, he is no respecter of person. And that's how we do it. But now we're talking about how we maintain sanctification. And maintaining sanctification is, again, blessed is the man who walks not in the council. I don't listen to unsaved folks and people. Give me advice on my Christian walk. Number two, my stand is what the Bible says. If God calls it sin, it's a sin. There is no argument on that. There is no 50 translations. There is no, no new age. You know what's funny? I was talking to some of the brothers and I said, only Christians do this. The Muslims have not um, updated their Quran. Judaism has not updated the Torah. Buddhists, Hinduism, Scientology, no other ancient religion updates. But Christians, we always want to try to update the Bible. And do y'all know the Bible is the most sold book in the world? They just don't even list it. But it's the most translated and sold book in the world. We are the ones that always want to, I got a new revelation. I got a new revelation. God didn't mean what he said. 
I got a new revelation. I don't feel convicted. Well, if you don't feel convicted, that don't mean that it, it ain't wrong. That just means that your conscience is seared. I don't see a problem with it. It ain't about what you see. The Bible says your righteousness is as a filthy rag, which is synonymous to a menstrual cycle rag. God don't care what you think. He's God. He set the rules. Our children don't tell us what to do no more than we tell God what to do. My children are grown now. I got two college graduates, one almost getting ready to graduate in a year. BA degrees, master's degrees. First lady is getting ready to graduate with her master and get her PhD. I'm still the head of my household. And my family still listens to me because they respect me as their dad, husband, and leader. And while I don't bully them, I have enough sense that when I don't have the expertise and what they went to school in, I ask them, hey, tell dad about this. I was asking Brianna about some marketing advice the other day. She's like, dad, you do it like this, this, and this. I was talking to DJ about psychology. Hey, son, what happens when a person does this, this? He said, oh, dad, it's called this, 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 and that. Man, man, in business law, I can't wait till Darion finish business law so I can put him on ret retainer. I can't wait till Darius finish his uh 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 uh, uh um, finish getting his his uh, uh license to sell homes and buy property so we can start buying property. I, I I'm still the leader, but see, with God, the Bible says God know everything. God sees all, knows all, and is at everywhere at the same time. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? And with him seeing all and knowing all, if he sees everything we do, let me ask y'all something. If he sees everything that we do, hey, Sister Stella, and he knows everything we do, why are we playing games with ourselves? Y'all remember how y'all used to laugh at the little baby? If y'all had a baby, if y'all had a baby, most babies just do this. Two things will happen. If a baby got quiet, you knew something was going on. Why, why is man man so quiet? Where's man man at? Next thing you know, he got Vaseline, Vaseline all on his face, baby powder and Vaseline caked all on his face because he got into something. He was too quiet. And you ask that baby, what did you do with Vaseline all on their face and baby powder and they looking like a white ghost? Nothing. Or how about this? You come in the kitchen, and they done climbed up in the cabinet and got cookies all over their face. Just cookie crumbs everywhere. All in their little fat, fat fingers. All on their face. <laughs> and then they go, and you say, what you eat them? I didn't eat no cookies. That's how we are to God. These big old spiritual babies got the sin all over us. It's all over us. I ain't been doing nothing wrong. And God just looking at us like, really? Now, I didn't already shed the blood for your past, present, and future sins. All you got to just do is say, forgive me, Lord. But you're going to deny that you even messed up. And that's an arrogance that I believe make, God's hurt, make God hurt. So blessed is the man, happy and fortunate and viable, is the man who lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, who does not follow their advice, their plans, and their purposes, number two, nor stands submissive or inactive. We are to talk against sin. We are to speak against sin, but we got to do it in a wise way. Y'all, I go to the barbershop. Don't nobody go running when I go to the barbershop. They know I'm a bishop. They know I live by the word. I hold them in in my barbershop accountable to their wives. We talk about God, but we also talk about the Lakers. We talk about sports. I'm a normal, real person living in this world. I don't get weird. I don't get to talking about sports. I got my, my, my shut up. I just felt an anointing. Now that might be you. That ain't me. It's no need for me. And Paul talks about that. Why are you speaking in tongues all the time? It's better to just give a word, a word of prophecy, a word of knowledge, <laughs> a word of wisdom. They ain't going to understand all that speaking in tongues when that's for your edif self edification. That's what you do when you're in your prayer closet. Some of y'all just too weird, man. Y'all too weird. Stop being so weird. Y'all understand? Stop being weird. So 
Um, be approachable. I don't want to use the word judgmental, but do not condemn somebody. When somebody tells you they sin, ah, you're going to hell. Well, they know that already. Give them what they need to get out of it. You tell them, you know, God don't love it. And if you continue in that, you will be judged on it. That's not you judging them. God is judging them. The Bible has judged them. The scripture has judged them. Our job is to give them light and give them the key out of it. That's our job. Um, last one. I told y'all. So heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. Amen. Have some fun in life. Have some fun. Y'all know the sanctified face. If y'all want to ever look sanctified, here it is. Act like some stink. Shake your head. Jerk like you got shot with electricity. I'm not knocking it. I've done it too. But holiness is a lifestyle. God is more concerned with how you live in 24-7 than your two-hour show on, on Sunday morning. We can't love God on Sunday and cheat on a Monday through Saturday. All right? We, we, we can't do it. We can't do it. We can't do it. We can't come up with these special tongues. And then we're cussing folks out, gossiping, lying, tail bearing. We're worse than the shade room. Child, I got tea, coffee, and a curry. <laughs> I just got cups coming. I got cups of tea coming. You got to do better than that, y'all. All right, last one. And I'm done. I'm done. What time is it? I'm done after this one. It says, blessed is the man. Fortunate, and happy, prosperous, and viable is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, their purposes, nor stands submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down. That's the last one I want to talk. Relax and rest where the scornful and the markers gather. And that's the part I was saying. Me and First Lady was not going to stay in a place that took something beautiful like sex that God created and began to pervert it. That's why the saints talk so hard on sex and they really messed up on that. The teaching of sex in the church really is, is it's really been beat up on so bad. Sex is a beautiful thing. It's something that God created for us to enjoy. But because the world has taken it and perverted it in so many ways, the church makes sex like it's such a nasty thing when God is the one that created it. So we have to reteach things in the pure form. Some things I thought I didn't like until I had somebody else cook it for me or somebody else prepare it for me. And when I had somebody else prepare it a different way, I said, oh, my God, it wasn't that I didn't like it. I just didn't like the way it was prepared there. Now, that's one thing I ain't going to like no matter how many ways you prepare it. And I tried it all. And if y'all was in church Sunday, y'all know what it is. It's called okra. I don't think we should be eating that. I think that's not a vegetable. I think that's an animal that dies when it grows. It looks like a slug. I don't think nobody saved should eat okra. It looks like boogers. It's not of God. And next to okra, it's beets. And I know my auntie, uh, uh, my aunt Dorcas is right now, almost called her unsure. I know she's like, Lord, the boy was doing good until he talked about okra. I don't want it fried. I don't want it boiled. I don't want it steamed. I don't want none of that slimy stuff. And beets taste like dirt. I don't know. I don't care what color they are. They taste like dirt. But there are some things. I used to didn't like greens. I love greens. I used to didn't like uh, Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. I used to didn't like broccoli. I love broccoli. I didn't think I liked sushi. I love sushi. I learned to go to places that perfect these things and they know how, and they ain't got a bunch of sugar and syrup and all that. They just know how to cook it right. And the problem with some folks is it's not that they don't want to live safe, it's how we cook salvation in front of them. How can you expect someone to want to be holy when the only example of God they see is our raggedy lives? Mm -hmm. 
How can we expect people to want to love our God and we're more depressed than them? We have less faith than they do. We're stressing as much as they do. Our marriages is just as raggedy as theirs. Our children are no better than theirs. What are we offering them? What example are we showing them to serve our God? And the reason why people don't come to your church or people don't want to serve your God is because of how you present your God. I want folks to see me and first lady's marriage. I want folks to say, man, I want to be, I, I want to have a, a first lady pastor's uh, marriage. I, we're not perfect. Yes, me and first lady argue. Yes, we've been on the verge that we thought we wasn't going to make it, but we fought for our marriage. We tell y'all, anybody been to our marriage seminars? No, we tell it all. We talk about it. Men have come at first lady. Women have come at me. We have messed up in finances. We have messed up in things. But what kept us constant was our love for God. And I want an example. I wanted to show an example to my children that marriage is a wonderful thing. This is how you treat a wife. You don't wait till Valentine's Day to buy something. I'm not bragging on myself. And I hope y'all don't get this wrong. I'm still talking about holiness. I don't wait till Valentine's Day to buy my wife diamonds and roses. I don't wait till her birthday to buy her purses. I don't wait till Christmas to buy her red bottoms. I do just because gifts. I do just because gifts. I do because you said yes. I want your life to be a, a living fairy tale with me. Yes, I'm going to have some days I can't stand you. Yes, you're going to have some days that you look at me and go, ugh. But love is a choice. And I choose to love you for the rest of my life. And you choose to love me. Me and my wife have grown old together. We've been married 25 years. This July 12th will be 25 years. And I want folks to see us and be like, Pastor First Lady so crazy. Look at them, how they worship together. Look at how they have fun together. Look at how they talk to each other. Look at how they tease each other. I want folks to want that. I want to show not a fake marriage because we tell our bad too, but a total transparency of what a Christian marriage should be and how folks say, I can do that too. I don't want them to think we're super perfect and I don't want them to think we boxing every night. And you ought to do the same with holiness. Listen, it says, brethren, Ephesians 2, 1 through 6. Listen to this and we're done. Ephesians 2, 1 through 6. Sit to, be, to remain in a particular state or position. We are not to sit in situations of sin. Saints don't shack. Saints don't smoke weed just to smoke weed. Unless your doctor has not put you on it, you don't just smoke weed to get away. Saints don't get drunk. Saints don't go out clubbing every night. If you're not with your wife enjoying the night, first of all, I tell you all the time, married couples should hang with married couples. You shouldn't be hanging with single people in your marriage. All right? Hang with folks who love God like you, who have the same standard. Because y'all do know there are some Christians that say they're Christians, but they have no standard. They live on the edge. I mean, on the edge of grace and truth. I mean, they <laughs> they tightrope walk, uh, walking. It's like, man, I can't hang with you. Sis, I can't hang with you. Mm -mm. My salvation won't let me do what you do. And it's okay to be that way. It's okay. It's okay. Listen, Ephesians 2, 1 through 6. And you have quickened, and ye hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according, here it is, to the prince of the power of the air. That's Satan, y'all. The spirit now worketh in the children, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation. Now, conversation and walk is the same thing. When it says conversation, it's translated your lifestyle. Listen to this. Had our conversations in time past in lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But 
God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, he has quickened us, raised us up together with Christ. By grace are we saved and has raised us up together and made us to sit now in heavenly places. Why would you lower your position to live a sinful lifestyle when God said you're better than that? You don't have to get drunk. You don't have to get high. You don't have to be lying to kick it. You ain't got to walk around here and sell yourself cheap to get a man or a woman. Stop putting yourself on level way and say, hold yourself to the value that God said, I'm in heavenly places. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. If you can control your walk, make sure that you don't listen to ungodly folks. If you make sure that your stand is what the Bible says, and make sure that if you're in a position where sin is prevalent, that you get yourself out of it. As much as I want to save women, I am not going to put myself in a position where I get the men's department to go over to a strip joint to go witness. I am not going to have the deacon board and the elders and we get our blessed oil in our Bibles. We're going to go down to a strip joint to preach the gospel. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to believe that's why we go. Now, I can hear my girl again. That's judging. It ain't judging. That's common sense. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Now, if we're in some restaurant and a bunch of strippers walk in, like they used to do with Jesus, and they come to Jesus, and they say, you know what, Pastor Doris, can you come to our table and talk to us about God? We tired of doing this. I'm going to call as many godly women as I can to have my back. So give me, give me five minutes. I'm going to get some backup, and I'm going to be right there. Don't y'all leave. I want to cover myself, because ain't nobody going to believe I'm witnessing to them. They're going to think I'm trying to get numbers, because that's just how, that's what's judgmental. But, you know, and then we're going to go to work. We're going to do what Jesus did. We're going to meet them at their need. I'm going to call Mama Tosca. I'm going to call First Lady. I'm going to call Chanel and Bridget and Jancita. I'm going to call all my, my OGs. I'm going to say, hey. Y'all get up, get dressed, and meet me at the Waffle House. Ain't no Waffle House in California. Meet me at Denny's. No, Sam, I'm not calling you, D. Ain't going to have proper dimples on my head. <laughs> and we're going to handle business. But I am not going on the devil's territory where it makes me, you send a bunch of women. The women can witness just as much as the men. All right? I'm not sending the women over to chocolate Sundays. I'm not sending, I'm not going to put people in situations where they fail. Listen, y'all, here's the bottom line. If you want to live holy, don't play games with yourself. Know what your proclivities are. Know what it is that uh, is your issues and starve it. Starve it. If you're single and you have a problem with your flesh, don't watch a bunch of romantic movies and don't watch them with your boyfriends and girlfriends. If y'all always falling. If you got a problem with fighting and cussing, stop hanging with the bunch that like to fight and cuss. <laughs> y'all tripping over chocolate. Why all y'all know about chocolate Sundays? What's going on? I just threw that in there. Stop. You know, let's be real with our walk with God. How you walk who you listen to, what's your stand on holiness? It's what the Bible says. And where I continue to, silence gives consent, y'all. So if you can stay in a situation all you want to, where I'm just going to go to this party and be quiet. I'm just going to go here and just, you can't do that. Silent gives consent. You have to make your stand. And sometimes when you first become a Christian, you're going to be by yourself for a while. I love my cousin, James Wade. That was my road dog. He was with me when I got shot. That was my dude. We dated. 
uh, uh, double dated with females together. We used each other's cars. What I had, he had. What he had, I had. We made sure all the girls had a friend. I mean, that, that just was my boy. But when I got saved and got married, I said, James, I can't hang with you because you're going to make me tear up my marriage. And he understood. I begged him to get saved with me. I begged him to commit. He wasn't ready yet. And that was a relationship I lost. Not so much that we didn't talk. I just couldn't hang with him like I used to. Ah, oh, Pastor, that's just too much. Well, it's what you value. Do you value your salvation? If your friends are worth more than your salvation, and you don't believe God can give you Christian friends that are just as much riders as your worldly friends, then maybe that's why you can't live the life that you want to live. Because you're not willing to let go. All right? So, that's the holiness series. I pray that you guys were blessed by the last three weeks. We're going to talk on love. I know y'all going to be happy about that. We're going to be talking on love real soon. But Super Bowl is Sunday. Listen, Super Bowl is Sunday. So I want everybody to get your jerseys on. We're going to celebrate the Super Bowl. It's kind of a dual threat because it's also Valentine's weekend. So listen, I want everyone to come. Bring your Super Bowl jerseys. And uh, uh, let's enjoy church. I love y'all so much. I pastor the best church in the valley. To all of you that's been helping me with my investments and sold into me, my investments came in. All the bishop's investments are here. Um, and the only thing I'm waiting on now is my chain, my gold chain and cross. So I want to thank everyone that's been celebrating with my consecration service. That'll be May the 6th, May the 6th of Friday night. All right. Listen, invite someone to service. I'm going to be preaching a powerful message. All right. And uh, we're just going to have a great time in God. I may not even preach. Y'all know how service has been lately. Service has been ridiculous lately. We want God to have their way. Love y'all. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for showing up with me, not leaving me by myself. All right. And I'll see y'all Sunday morning. Listen, sow a seed. Everyone right now, there's about 30, 40 people on. Everyone, if you can, give a $20 cash out. Zale, um, mail it in, however you want to do. Give LaFi. Listen, so a $20 seat, that's not a lot of money. That's chump change in today's time. But $20 can help us do a lot of ministry, okay? So y'all help us right now. Everyone sow a $20 seat right now. And we love you. God bless you. I'll see you at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. All right? Talk to y'all later. Let's do it. You win, y'all. God bless you.